as a real estate agent, you are not an employee, believe it or not. You're actually an entrepreneur, a business professional, and a CEO of your own company. It's up to you to implement time management practices that actually work for your business. And you know this next part quite well. As real estate agents, we don't get paid just for showing up. We get paid to do the work and get results. So that means the more results that we get, the more that we get paid and the better our business thrives. Now, unfortunately, most of us struggle with time management, not only for our personal lives, but our professional lives as well. So let's take a look at some time management tips that can help you run your business much more effectively so you can get more things done. Hey, it's Jaime with JaimeResendez.com where we have one of the fastest growing and largest real estate agent communities worldwide. First things first, you need to log your day. Now, before any change happens, first we need to understand what are we doing right now? What are we doing in the 24 hours that we have every single day? So we're gonna start off by logging what is it that we do in the day. So this means that you're either gonna track your day on an Excel sheet, on a spiral, on your phone, wherever it is that you take notes, you need to start tracking that day. So for seven days in a row, track what you do. If you are spending time on social media, we'll put how much time you're spending on social media. If you're spending time working out, put down how long you're taking to work out. Everything goes on this time log. And right off the bat, the moment that you do this, you're gonna feel a little bit different. You're gonna be challenged in many respects. You're gonna realize how much time you're spending on Netflix. And you're also gonna spend how much time or lack thereof you're spending in your business. So it's gonna be a huge realization just by merely writing something down. But it doesn't stop there, that's just the beginning. Now is a critical part. Now is when we're purposefully looking at our day taking into account what we are doing that day and we get serious. Now we do a deep dive on what we need to continue doing, either ourselves or what we need to delegate to somebody else, what we need to automate, and also what we need to get rid of. It truly is those three things. What are you gonna delegate? What are you gonna automate? And what are you going to stop doing? That's all it is. That's what you need to take into account. So. For those things that you need to delegate, well, batch those together and find somebody to help you with those tasks. This may mean hiring a transaction coordinator. It might mean hiring a showing agent, hiring an assistant, hiring a marketing coordinator, hiring somebody that you can delegate the, at the task that you cannot do or don't have the skill set to perform any longer. Now that's you delegating and in general, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money. However, don't think about what it's gonna cost you. Think about the investment that you're making because these tasks that you've identified that should be delegated to somebody else because they can do it faster, because they can do it better, because they can free you up to go out and get more business. Once you have that in your mind, once you truly understand that you're able to have somebody else take over and do it much faster, much better, and ultimately get better results, you're going to move a lot faster. So it's really not gonna matter how much it's costing you. On the contrary, how much is it costing you by not doing it is what you really need to look at. How many more appointments could you go on if you didn't have to do all of your paperwork? How many more prospecting hours could you fit in in the morning or in the afternoon, whenever it is that you prospect, if you didn't have to take care of everything that comes with the transaction. Now again, that's delegation. Let's talk about automation now. With automation, that typically means a software taking over. So that could mean scheduling all of your appointments through Calendly, which is a free software for you to use, which allows people to get onto your calendar without your intervention. All they need is a URL to your calendar, which is through Calendly, and they book an appointment, they give you their email, they give you their phone number, they give you notes that you ask from them on every single appointment. So all you have to do now is just show up. Think of how radically different it is from how you're performing that task right now. Whenever you're trying to meet a client or whenever you're trying to meet a vendor or meet somebody, one of your peers, you have to go back and forth on email or DMs or text 
you're going, hey, can you do Sunday? No, I can't do Sunday. Can you do Monday? Yeah, I can do Monday. Can you do that in the morning? No, I can't do that in the morning. I can only do the afternoon. I can't do the afternoon. Okay, well, how about Wednesday? And on and on and on. All of that could be shortened and eliminated by you just having something in an automated fashion, which is Calendly. And that's just one example, which is appointment setting. That is something that you should be doing right now in your business. If you don't have a Calendly link, go to Calendly.com and get a free account right now. Now, another example of automation is how your leads are coming to you. If you're generating leads through Google ads or Facebook ads, YouTube ads, or however it is that you're generating leads, as opposed to asking people to email you, how about they opt into one of your landing pages to where once they click on your landing page, they'll give you their name, they'll give you their phone number, they'll give you a few more notes. And as soon as the lead comes in, you automate on the back end by sending them an email automatically or a text automatically, letting them know that you received their information and will be back in touch with them very shortly. Now, here's one thing that might keep you from taking action. And that is looking at each one of these suggestions that I'm giving you in a silo, just seeing them individually. So you may be thinking, well, hi, man, you know, it, it may take me a couple of seconds, maybe a couple of minutes to schedule an appointment with someone, but it eventually happens. And then also, you know, when somebody gives me their contact information or emails me directly, it takes me no time at all to respond back with whatever it is that they need. If you look at it that way, in an individual standpoint, okay, you might win. However, that doesn't happen just once. Doesn't even happen twice. That happens hundreds into thousands of times. So you're booking through the tenure of your career, you're booking hundreds into thousands of appointments. Same thing with following up with leads. You should be generating hundreds into thousands of leads every single year if you're gonna be hitting the sales quota that you want. So all of that adds up and it doesn't add up to 15 minutes. It doesn't add up even to an hour. It adds up into days. There's days and days and days that it adds up to. So we really need to take care of our calendar, be more protective of it than you are right now. So now that we take a full inventory of what we're doing in the day and being really critical and analyzing what is it that we are doing in that day. Once we go into delegation mode and then once we go into automation mode, we cannot forget the most important part for my money. What is it that I need to stop doing? So remember, you took the log of what you did for the day. Then you were very critical of it. All right, so what's, what's happening here? What am I actually doing? Am I spending more time prospecting or not? Being very critical, right? And then you have three options. You have three options. You can delegate and then you could also automate and then you could also let go of certain things. That's actually my favorite part. No one has the perfect day. So that means that whenever you go through this exercise, there will be some things that you need to cut out or maybe do less of. I'll give you that. Maybe do less of. If you're finding yourself five hours on social media, well, we might need to scale that back, right? If we're finding ourselves two hours on Netflix, well, maybe one hour will do, right? So that's something that you can't delegate. That's something that you really can't automate. You can't brain dump all of those shows into your mind. Well, maybe I guess you could, but that's a different conversation. But you really can't, um, if you are if you um, are not planning to get rid of it altogether, then let's scale it back, right? But here's here's the main thing. Once you have gone through this entire exercise, there will be some things that you need to cut out. There will be some things that you need to stop doing. And then once you have all those three, again, you delegate, you automate, stop doing what's left over. Well, it's the things that you need to keep doing, right? If you find yourself not doing anything for the rest of the day, then congratulations. You need to go out and find some additional things to bring business to you. Now, once you go through this exercise, let me know in the comment section down below how it went. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below, but also don't forget to subscribe because I've noticed that over 80% of you are not subscribed to the channel. What's up with that?